Welcome back everyone to a fresh new video on our YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna find out some of the greatest signature moves in NFL. Number 7. Making its way to our list is Peyton Manning's Play Action Signature Move. Regarded as one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, Peyton finished his 14 seasons with the team Indianapolis Colts and 4 seasons with the team Denver Broncos. Manning is also one of the NFL's most recognizable players and was nicknamed as Sheriff. Peyton is seen running crosswise backwards arms stretched out to hand the ball, off to his teammates running back on the cold patented round run. Spectators are watching the running back players Edgerin James, Joseph Adai, Donald Brown, and then all of a sudden the cameraman focuses back to Peyton Manning because he still has the ball in his hands. However, Peyton is staring at Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Pierre Garçon all the way down to the field and suddenly everyone around notices that it's a touchdown. Regardless of the fact that Peyton Manning's play action move is fake, but it is really Really the simplest and most devastating move of all time. Number 6. Moving on, we have Barry Sanders' jump cut. Sanders' signature cutbacks, fakes, and misdirections made him one of the strongest running backs to sack in the NFL history. Barry Sanders' speed and sharpness was so good that it was almost impossible to reckon which direction he will move on until he has passed you. Though there were many questions about Barry Sanders' size, Barry has proved all his critics' assumptions wrong. Sanders was far too smart for defenders to strike solidly on a constant purpose and too powerful to drop with arm tackle. Sanders had an unusual explosiveness, carrying away all the odds that he had which claimed that his height is barely 5'8 and his playing weight is 200 pounds, which is only just under the NFL par as a running back. Sanders illustrated his incredible skills in the 1991 Foot Locker Slam Dunk Contest despite his shot-sized reputation. He was the first running back who ran for 1,500 yards in total five seasons and the only one NFL athlete to do it in four successive years. In contrast to several of the star players of his period, Sanders was also popular for his on-field humbleness. Despite his bold playing style, Sanders was hardly seen enjoying after the game was ended. Rather than that, he was often seen handing the ball to the referee and congratulating his teammates. There are various NFL fans who still regard Barry as the best running back who ever played the game. We also feel the same. If Barry Sanders had played longer, it's absolutely possible that he would have retired as the NFL NFL's all-time leading rusher. Number 5. Dwight Freeney's Spin Move If you have seen professional football on any Sunday in recent 14 years, it's clearly possible that you have seen Dwight Freeney's Spin Move. Freeney was one of the NFL's best pass rushers, and his quick moving spin boosted him to rack up lots of his 115.5 career sacks. Dwight Freeney is recognized as one of the best pass rushers of all time, and his signature spin move is the simplest move of any defensive player in NFL history. Freeney is so fast and dangerous off the edge that tackles often exaggerate him for the outside attack, perfectly preparing him for the inside rotation once he has turned his flanks. He gets up on the field quickly and shifts directions even faster because of the spin, and before players even know it, he gets his quarterback on the ground. Number 4. Next, we have Randy Moss's jump ball catch. Randy Moss was a strong freak. He was able to run faster, jump higher, and catch the ball over any number of defenders coming in his path. The best way to handle Moss's extraordinary skill set was to just throw the ball to him in the rare zone and allow him to go fetch it. Randy's extended arms, big hands, and excellent body control indicated that he was going down with the ball almost every time. Randy Moss looked like a basketball player in shoulder pads and a helmet whenever he was seen jumping high above defensive players and catching passes from the air during his 14-year NFL career. There was no reason to get confused when it came to getting the ball to Randy Moss during his two-year overpowered carnage of defenses for Marshall University. One of Moss's most popular highlights, and the one that everyone believes imposed Moss on the NFL's front page, came in 1997. With the New York media wrapping the game, Moss took a small inner screen pass and made at least five tacklers misplays on his way to a 90-yard touchdown. Number 3. Dan Marino's Quick Release Anyone who witnessed the cannon that Dan Marino exhibited in his college games can't be stunned at all by the passing records that he established in the NFL. Best known for his sharp release and powerful arm, Marino benefited the Miami Dolphins to become consistent, leading them to the playoffs 10 times and one Super Bowl appearance in the 19th Super Bowl game. Marino is considered by many analysts as one of the greatest players who never 
won a Super Bowl with the most career victories as a quarterback. Dan Marino's stats backs his legacy. For a long time, he was the all-time leader in almost each passing category. Marino is very dangerous in all situations because of his lightning quick release. All legendary quarterbacks with quick releases are always correlated to Marino. With his bright arm and lightning quick release, Marino served as the most productive passer in NFL history. He was the all-time leader in touchdown passes, completions and attempts when he retired in March 2000 after playing for 17 seasons. The 6'4 quarterback tempted defenses to resist him. If anyone ever made fun of the phrase, sophomore jinx, it was Marino. In his magical 1984 season, he became the first quarterback in NFL history to ever throw for more than 5,000 yards. He began the season with five touchdown passes and finished up by throwing four in each of the lethal four games. Number two, Devin Hester joystick. Devin Hester is the most exciting man in NFL history. It's still a secret why anyone gives him an opportunity to take one to the house either through a punt or kick. He is widely considered as the biggest returned professional athlete in NFL history. He was also the first person to return the corner kick of the Super Bowl back for a touchdown. Hester has a record of 18 return touchdowns in his career, more than any player in the NFL. Hester's ability to stop briefly and change direction while still moving at full speed combined with his incredible vision make him a threat to go all the way every time he touches the ball. He was the first player in the university's football history to play in all three stages of American football, which was offense, defense, along with special teams. Initially recruited as a cornerback, Hester rapidly made an influence as a kick returner and later became a wide receiver. He holds the NFL record for the most all-time punt return touchdowns and all-time return touchdowns. Number 1. Lawrence Taylor's Outside Rush Taylor revolutionized the game of outside linebacker, which was known as a read-and-retract position. Taylor was an attacking linebacker who had the excessive strength and speed to make plays anywhere in the field. Lawrence was also the most undisciplined defensive player of his era. During his 13-year-long career, he made 10 Pro Bowl appearances. Taylor helped the Giants seize their first two Super Bowl titles in franchise history. He also amassed the League Most Valuable Player Award in 1986 and became the second defensive player ever to receive the award. Besides his stats, Taylor's amazing talent compelled opposing general coordinators to rethink how they fiddled against him and come up with new techniques to obstruct him. Former Giants general manager pointed out that left tackles had to caught up on a curve against Taylor, a strategy that wasn't as important after Taylor retired from the game. Williams commented that Washington's head coach Joe Gibbs whose team used to engage in some on-field battles against the Giants in the 1980s, used to plan around Taylor, coming up with a new formation which involved an additional tight end for slowing Taylor down. The strategy didn't work regularly for Taylor, who not only dominated Washington's team, but also improved his performance in the rest of the league, which later on helped him to become the league MVP, a two-time Super Bowl champion, a three-time defensive player of the year, and a 10-time pro bowler. Taylor retired from professional football after the 1993 season with career totals of 132 sacks, 1,088 tackles, 33 forced fumbles, and 9 interceptions. He was also listed in the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1999. Share your thoughts in the comments box.